On the evening of August 17th, 2005, 21-year-old Stephen Hunley was having dinner with his five friends when somebody mentioned the Secret Cave. Having grown up in Provo, Utah, Stephen and his five friends had all heard the legend of the cave that was up in the mountains near Brigham Young University, where supposedly in the back of this cave, there was this underwater tunnel that led to a back room where there was this air pocket inside of which, you know, dark rituals and human sacrifice took place. And it was an interesting story and everyone had heard of it, but no one thought there was any truth to it. But that night, one of Stephen's friends, 21-year-old Jennifer Galbraith, dropped a bombshell on the group. She said, not only is the secret cave real, but that she had actually been to it and knows what's inside. And so, of course, they're like, give me a break. You have not been to the secret cave. It doesn't even exist. And she would say, no, I'm telling you the truth. I have been to something that I'm almost positive is the secret cave. And so the group's kind of smiling at her and they're like, all right, we'll indulge you. Tell us where the secret cave is and what's inside. She said the cave she went into was on Y Mountain, so that's right next to Brigham Young University, and it was just north of the Seven Peaks Golf Course. And she said the actual entrance to the cave is inside of this little stretch of boulders, where if you weren't looking closely, you couldn't even tell there was a space in between the boulders that you could walk down into. You would really have to be looking in between the boulders to see this little opening, where it descends about 10 or 15 feet to the cave floor. Once you climb down that, there's no water, it's just getting down to the entrance of the cave. Once you get down there and you're on the cave floor, in order to actually go into the cave, you need to hunch down because the ceiling of the cave is no higher than four feet. And at times it gets even lower. And so you crouch down and you got your flashlight and you walk about a hundred feet to the back of the cave and you'll see there's this beautiful little pool of crystal clear water. And if you shine your light into this pool of water, you'll see on the bottom about five feet down, there is this little tiny opening just big enough for a person to get through. And that is the secret underwater tunnel that is 15 feet long and it leads up to an air pocket on the other side. Jen told the group that clearly this is not a sanctioned cave that you're allowed to go exploring in. In fact, if authorities knew about it, they probably would just block it off. But she said whoever had found it first had tied a rope from a rock on one side of the 15 feet underwater tunnel through the tunnel to the air pocket and was tied to some wood on the other side. So that when you dove in head first into this little tiny tunnel that you could basically pull the line and it would pull you through to the other side. Jen said she'd actually been to this cave just a couple of months earlier with another group of friends and she said she was really scared about doing the underwater swim but what she remembers about the experience what really stood out to her was how cold the water was. She said you know I got to the other side no problem but I was just so cold I had to immediately turn around and go back out and warm up again. At this point, Stephen and the other friends are very intrigued by what Jen has just told them. She sounds like she's telling the truth, and it sounds like she definitely was in, you know, some cave. Whether or not it was the secret cave or not, it really didn't matter. They were just really interested in this cave, which they were now referring to as the Cave of Death. And so they started saying to each other, hey, let's just go tonight. Let's go check out the Cave of Death tonight. And so by about 2, 3 in the morning, the group was like, yeah, let's go. And Stephen, unfortunately, he had to work the next day, so he couldn't go, even though he really wanted to. And so as the group headed off for Y Mountain, Stephen headed home. So the group of five arrives at the golf course parking lot, which is apparently at the base of where this cave entrance is going to be on this mountain, according to Jen's description. They hop out, they're wearing flip-flops and shorts, it's mild weather, and Jen assured them the walk up to the boulders, the entrance of this cave, it's not very far. And so they start walking up the mountain, and I'm sure some of the people in the group were pretty skeptical that this place even even exists, but they keep on walking and at some point Jen says there and she points at a cluster of boulders just like in her description. And so they walk over and they poke their heads over the boulder and just like she described, there's this hole in the ground and they shine their lights down into it and it looks like there's that flat spot about 10 or 15 feet down and the group can't believe it. This place really does exist. All of a sudden the group is really energized, you know, they're nervous, they're excited and they're all kind of clamoring their way down this 10 or 15 foot section down to that start point and while they're making their way down, one of them, 26 year old Joseph Ferguson, he's like, you know what, I don't really want to do this anymore. You guys can swim through the tunnel of death and the cave of death. I'm gonna stay out here, you know, we're probably not allowed to be in here anyway, so you know, I'll, I'll be the lookout and I'll wait for you guys when you come out again. The other four chastised him briefly, but ultimately they didn't really care and they turned their flashlights on, they turned around and they crouched down and they began walking through that low ceiling area down towards the pool of water. 
Joseph turned around, climbed up, and he sat on one of the boulders, and he looked down towards that little entrance area. And for a little while, he could hear the group still talking as they made their way farther underground, and then eventually he couldn't hear them anymore. Joseph had no idea how long this whole process was supposed to take. You know, was it going to be five hours before he saw them again, or was it going to be 30 minutes? He didn't know. And so after an hour, he started to think, okay, this feels a little bit long. And so he climbed down off his boulder to that little entrance area and he poked his head down and looked out across the area with the low ceiling to see if he could see flashlights or hear anything, but he didn't. And so after a little while, he climbed back up onto the boulder and he waited another hour and he still hasn't heard them yet. And he climbed down one more time and he looked again, no light, no sound. And so at this point he decides he has to call the police. Police and rescuers show up and they were shocked that one, this cave even existed and two, that no one had boarded it up yet because it was such a huge hazard. But either way, they began sucking water out of the tunnel and pumping air back in because Joseph had told them the group was going to be swimming through this tunnel where there was apparently this air pocket on the backside. And so they figured pump some air in there, keep them alive until we can get them out. The pumping lowered the water in the tunnel by about two feet, at which point rescuers could actually just go into the tunnel and they wouldn't need to hold their breath. And that's when they reached Jen's body about halfway through. She was angled in such a way that she must have been coming back from the air pocket and the other three were stacked up right behind her. Investigators believe the group was able to successfully swim through the tunnel the first time into the air pocket. And they were in there for a little while. That can hold up to eight people inside of there, plenty of air. And at some point they decide to go back. And so Jen was gonna be the first one to swim back. She was the one that brought them in there. She'll be the one to bring them out. And the other three, it's presumed, were right on her tail. Maybe they didn't wanna be the last ones inside of this creepy dark cave. And they were worried that if they didn't go out with the group, they might get lost somehow. And so they all basically jumped in right after Jen. They're all right on top of each other going through this tunnel. And so Jen made it about halfway before she got stuck on something and she drowned. Now, the other three swimmers were right on top of her. And so when the second swimmer came up to Jen's body, they couldn't have gotten through. They might've tried, but there was no way to get through. It's pitch black. You're now blocked in front of you and the other two swimmers are right behind you blocking your way out. So the second swimmer is pinned in the middle of the tunnel. They can't move. They can go in reverse, but only if the third and fourth swimmer in realize what's happening and they too go in reverse. And again, it's pitch black in a tight little tunnel and they don't know what's going on. So second swimmer gets pinned. Third swimmer is really in the same position too. They're blocked by the second swimmer and the fourth swimmer is blocking their retreat. And so the fourth swimmer is really the only one that had the ability to save anybody's life. They would have had to go in reverse and start that train of getting everybody to go out in reverse. But this is real life. And so what probably happened is Jen made it halfway through the tunnel before getting stuck and drowning. The other three, one by one, realized they were trapped inside of the tunnel. They couldn't go forward, they couldn't go back. They can't turn around, it's pitch black. Before long, they're thrashing and grabbing onto each other because they're panicking. And then they start inhaling water and they drown too. After the bodies were removed, there was some discussion about maybe finding a way to make the cave safe so people could go in there and enjoy it responsibly. But they looked at it and they said, there's just simply no way to make this cave safe. It's unbelievably dangerous, no matter what safety precautions we put in place. And so they decided to pour cement inside of it and cover it with rocks. And their only regret is they didn't find it sooner to do that sooner because they could have prevented this tragedy. So that's gonna do it guys. If you found the secret in today's video, let us know in the comments what it is and where you found it. So give us the timestamp. And if you're the first to do that, we will pin you at the top of the comment section. If you enjoyed today's video and you haven't done this already, please weave the like button, a friendship bracelet, but rub poison ivy all around the inside. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly three, four, even five video uploads. If you want to get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram or on Twitter. My username for both platforms is the same. It's johnballin416. I also have a ton of content over on TikTok where my username is Mr. Ballin. If you have a story suggestion, please submit it to our subreddit just called Mr. Ballin that's linked in the description below. So whether I see you on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, YouTube, or some combination, just know that I really appreciate your support. And until next time, that's going to do it. See ya.